had, the only other thing I had in there were four little plastic cabinets, like what you would buy for a dorm back in America. And that was everything. I came over with one suitcase. Now some people had brought over the maximum 75 pounds of luggage that people would allow you to bring on the plane without paying loads more, but I really didn't have a lot of extra money to be spending to bring a lot more over. Um, I only really wanted to come over with a little bit of stuff and I, since I planned on never coming back, I knew I would start buying a new wardrobe once I got to Japan. So I came over with two pairs of jeans, one suit, and seven t-shirts. So pretty much enough for one week, okay? Minding that I wash the jeans every two days. So uh, the only other things our apartment had was a washing machine, no dryer, a refrigerator that was a miniature refrigerator, like maybe about half the size of a large American one, and a shower but no bath. And um, that was about it. That was for three, you know, grown men. And um, there was one table to put one computer at. And, you know, of course my room wasn't anywhere big enough to have one. So, as you can imagine, that was quite tiny. Anyway, some other things that I found a little disorienting when I first got to Japan was, I guess no one quite understands that absolutely no one speaks English. Also, one thing people don't understand, unless you teach a language, you don't realize how slow you have to speak that language for people who are just beginning to learn it. Now, this is nobody's fault, because not everybody works this kind of job. But being someone who works in a job where I teach English, I know I have to go slow sometimes with some of the students that are just starting to learn. So I speak slower. But when you're in another country, people don't always understand that. I mean, if you think about America, how many times have you slowed down your English for someone who barely understands English? Well, it's the same in Japan. No one slows down to speak to you slower to help you understand the language. Also, another thing that was really difficult for me was I had studied Tokyo Ben before I had come over and no one told me that in Osaka they speak Kansai Ben and that has totally different endings a lot of different pronunciations and actually a different uh, a, lot, a lot of different accents at the end and uh, rhetorical na instead of ne a lot of times which really confused me because it just sounded even more foreign to me and none of the books I had found in America showed anything about this kind of dialect so I was pretty screwed when it came to language Still, one good thing I have to say is the first three months were pretty much like a wonderland. I was having the honeymoon period of my life with Japan. Every little thing was amazing and everything I did I found wondrous. And all the time I was finding something new. Every, every day I was learning something new, finding out something new. I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize is the first three months are going to be the best time that you have in Japan. After that, after you hit about four months, it just gets real, okay? You start to realize Japan is like any other country. People work hard every day, it has its problems, it has its pluses, it has its minuses, and it's a grind just like any place else. You gotta wake up, you gotta be on time, people expect you to work your job hard, diligently, and with respect. You need to learn the rules, the customs, and follow through with all the mannerisms that you would have in any job. Also, every job that you're going to work, there is going to be a language barrier. Almost any job you're going to work, there's going to be a language barrier, unless you're absolutely fluent at Japanese. Um, and it's not a language that you can just pick up really quick. Some people write to me and say, you know, hey, uh, Scott, I've been studying for four months. Uh, do you think I'm about ready to come to Japan and speak Japanese? Well, how much have you spoken Japanese, like actually spoken Japanese with another person who's talking back to you in fluent Japanese? Until you experience that, you haven't really had that much experience with the language. I thought I knew quite a bit because I had studied for six months straight before I came here. When I finally got here, I could barely understand anything people were saying. Now some people are going to learn faster and be able to listen faster than myself. I'm not the best at languages, I'll be the first to admit that. But it's going to be way more challenging when you have to listen to people speak it to you. Okay? Just remember that. That was one of the most disorienting things when I first got here. So be ready for that. And be ready to know how to say to speak slower. Yukuri yutte kudasai. Okay? I hope my first week of experiences helps you understand what you'll be facing on your first week. And if you have any more questions about that, feel free to write me. That's our FAQ. Have a good one, guys.